I was just commenting that it's strange that we have to continue to meet each other outside the White House, which is where Code Pink started, to end war. And I want to thank James for his words and Cor for being here. One quarter of the children he mentioned, you know, that are half of the country that have grown up in war, 18 years, they have grown up in this war. One quarter of them are working. They are making bricks. They're they're drafted into war. They they you know we we don't understand the abject poverty that we have caused with trillions of dollars. Like think about it. Like how much money of our tax dollars have we poured into Afghanistan to impoverish people? Except the usual, they get rich on war, but the rest get very poor. And that we have done this to a whole generation of children. Um, at the beginning, before we invaded Afghanistan, a woman in Afghanistan, I want to read her words, Malala Joya. In Afghanistan, democratically minded people have been struggling for human and women's rights for decades. Our history proves that these values can be imposed, cannot be imposed by foreign troops. No nation can donate liberation to another nation. These values must be fought for and won by the people themselves. We have interrupted that capacity for them to fight for liberation, to come to their own determination, and not only interrupted it, but we have devastated a country. And just looking back, that was done, what, on the excuse of we're going into Afghanistan to save the women, right? The women do not feel saved in Afghanistan. First of all, if you do that to your children, of the children of these women, you know you have not been there for the women. And you know that the women of Afghanistan have been living in the, the depression of war. We know what that is, the post-traumatic stress of war that makes life almost intolerable. But, you know, we, when we went to Afghanistan, we met some young women who wanted to make Afghanistan better. So we helped them come to the United States and study law so they could go back and change the laws of Afghanistan. They can't go back to Afghanistan. Their families have left Afghanistan. They're, they, are, they have lost hope. Um, and they continue to lose hope. The other thing we did when we went to Afghanistan is it was the time when Obama, was threatening to do an escalation in Afghanistan. And we thought, well, if we go back and bring home the voices of the women, he'll understand this is a bad idea. But we brought back 4,000 signatures from women in Afghanistan and they fell on deaf ears. Kind of sounds familiar for what we're experiencing this week in Washington, DC, the deaf ears that women's voices fall on. No, instead he listened to generals in the United States instead of the women of Afghanistan. We have got to have a feminist foreign policy. We have got to stop that weapons and war and violence are something we value and are willing to invest our tax dollars in. We need to divest from war. Our cities, our states, our pension funds, our universities, our philanthropy that is supposed to be there to serve humanity is invested in weapons and war. This is insane. It is time to divest ourselves from weapons and war, invest ourselves in peace, and by ourselves I mean all of ourselves, in peace, in empathy, in kindness, in listening, and to use our voices loud and clear to tell Trump out of Afghanistan now. Make that promise come true. Yay! Thank you.